living not to die is barely living at all. We all have different tolerances for risk. Mine are a little bit higher than most people's. Nevertheless, we all should be able to take a look, try to examine the risks that are upcoming with any action that we're going to be taking, and try to mitigate those risks as much as possible and see if they're worth taking. I'm not saying that it would necessarily be all that great a risk to take to jump out of an airplane without a parachute or to go to the middle of whatever territory ISIS has remaining with an American flag wrapped around your chest. Those aren't necessarily good ideas risk-wise. However, again, we cannot allow fear to control our lives, which is what's currently going on. Just one story to demonstrate for you how I believe we should assess risk. I was in Peru and I met a tour guide and I informed him that I was planning to go to Puerto Maldonado in the middle of the Amazon and then continue around the rainforest and explore. And he looked at me and he's like, are you crazy? Do you know how many people go there and catch malaria and UTA? And I had never heard of UTA before. It's apparently, as he explained it to me, it's a disease that is endemic almost solely to Peru in that region. And mosquito or a sand fly will infect you with a parasite that will then eat its way out. And people are left with giant pieces of their face just missing, giant scars. And this has profoundly negative impact upon your health, obviously. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I'm scared. I'm scared. I don't want to catch Utah. I don't want to catch malaria. I knew these were possibilities. And I just thought about it. I've traveled all the way to Peru. It's a long flight. It's not that easy to travel within Peru. It's arduous. So what, am I going to give up on it all of a sudden? Am I really not going to go and fulfill this dream that I've always had of going into the Amazon because I've been scared by somebody? Yeah, other people have made it to the Amazon successfully and come out. Many, many people. No, I'm going to go there anyways because I understand the risk. I'm taking that into account and I will wear a jacket and try to mitigate it. Guys, I've managed Standing to up. escalate my battle against the vine. Right now it's rich one, vine zero, and mosquitoes likely gaining. That's why you can see I'm covered head to toe in clothing. Don't want as few bites as possible when I get back home. Little chances, malaria. <laughs> Uta, Zika, or whatever else. You can tell how dirty my hands are. Hey. <sighs> and now it's breaking. <laughs> now you take a look at coronavirus today and how we are allowing this fear of something new and novel, which is always more scary. And there are people, as was described to me today, that have seen people hugging in a movie, on TV, and be thinking, oh my gosh, you shouldn't be doing that. That's not safe. You shouldn't be hugging. This is the effect that the fear that is being instilled into our population is having. We are social creatures, and this fear that is being crammed down our throats, that they are hypnotizing us with, are changing the way that we interact with each other on a permanent basis, it seems, because maybe in the future these people aren't going to want to out, go out and hug, or at least it's going to take a little while before that comes back. We are changing our behavior based on this fear factor. It was also described to me today that my friend, his sister, told him that she woke up from a dream where people were not socially distancing and thought, oh my gosh, and it scared her. This is what we've come to. We know that this disease affects the old elderly and those with pre-existing conditions, specifically obesity, that is going to create more of a storm within your body should you catch this virus. And nobody wants to catch it. Many healthy people have caught it and it's been taking quite a toll on them. For most people, it just comes, it goes, it passes. Most people don't even know that they've had it. But we are still, regardless, we have to understand that we are not truly living if we curtail all our actions ongoing based on what is a fairly negligible risk and that our society and the way that we interact with each other and the warmth and tolerance and love that we have for each other's actions is diminishing. If you see somebody walking around without wearing a mask apparently in the United States right now, 
they are looked upon as outcasts or somebody says something to them or even they get arrested. I, I disagree with this vehemently. Our liberties are being eroded. And we are becoming more and more reliant on the state rather than sovereign individuals with agency over our actions and what we do with our lives. The psychological effects of how we are handling the disease in the long run might be worse than the disease itself. As they say, the cure cannot be worse than the disease. And if you take a look at children in America not interacting with each other and the stress this is causing them and the mental illness, the number of people that are considering suicide is so rapidly rising along with suicide rates and the fact that we are closing down businesses and it's based on not even science. In California, Gavin, Minis Gavin Newsom's health minister came out and stated in an interview that it wasn't based on science. It was based on keeping people indoors. This is what they're trying to do and with fear in order to control us. This is anti-liberty. This is taking away our right to live, breathe, and per the pursuit of happiness, which is guaranteed by the Declaration of Independence for all men. At some point, each and every one of us is going to die. And maybe I might make a decision that might lead to that destination a little bit earlier than it otherwise would have come. Nevertheless, as a society and as individuals, it is incumbent upon us to maintain agency over our own actions and not allow ourselves to be ruled by fear by the feckless politicians that are fearful of losing their position of power and thus imposing on us onerous restrictions and regulations as to what we can and cannot do trying to impose upon us what we, how we live our lives. Try telling me that I should not go to, into the Amazon because I'll catch Utah and regulating that. That is an individual choice. It is up to us and incumbent upon us to decide what we do every day and the choices that we make and the destination where we end up. And if I were to go and catch Utah, if when I was in Syria I was to have been killed in the middle of the desert, which was a possibility. Yeah, those are risks and those were what I chose. And you out there have the right as a spiritual being to decide how you live this existence. The energy that is infused into your body that we call life is able to choose how it wants to live and to stand up to the government that tells you no, that tells you you can't do this for whatever reason, they will just continue to exert more control unless we stand up to them. So go out there and go to your proverbial Amazon and face your fears because your life will be better because of it. And if you choose not to, then that's your prerogative too. But it is not the choice of the government. It is not up to them to dictate how we live our life and the choices that we make. This is Recharge freedom, subscribe, notification bell, all notifications. And most of all, have a empowering day where you take action and make the choice that is best for you. Peace and blessings.